it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today let's get going on a video and we're going to be making some frangipani bath bombs. Um, so with my bath bombs the one thing I will tell you is it takes a lot of practice to be able to do them. I do get lots and lots of um, soaping companies that contact me um, to make the bath bombs because they just feel like they just find it so hard to make and I totally understand that because they are really hard. So when you see somebody you know that's charging five eight ten dollars for a bath bomb you really do have to remember that they probably had a lot of fails before and after and in between because bath bombs are just that tricky tricky thing to get right and even if you manage to get a bath bomb that's really nice and hard it's round it's looking great often then it doesn't fizz or it sinks or so on and there's lots of reasons why they sink and so on but anyway today let's get into a video I'll show you how I bloom it first then we'll be uh, weighing up everything and then after that we're going to be putting it into the little molds and um, then next of course I'm well actually not next before I do that bit I'll also show you how I actually do the dyes and what you can do to compact losing the color because as lots of you know sometimes uh, when you're doing markets and things like that or if your products in the sunny window it can lose its color so the soluble dyes that I use do lose their color in time so you do have to combat that with adding a mica or something else similar which is what we're going to do so today I'm going to be using um, this really gorgeous cherry red and I'm only going to put a small amount to make it a pinky color and then I'm going to add this little bit of yellow as well I won't do heaps and heaps of yellow but what I usually do with these so this is my yellow and then I'm also going to add some uh, yellow mica color as well and the same as with my cherry then we're going to put some pink in it as well uh, mica because like I said if it loses its color from the soluble dye then it won't lose its color from the mica but we do need the soluble dyes because that's what makes the water change color and it's fun and that's what the kids want they want to see that as well as I always say please use polysorbate 80 it's a product that disperses oils into the bath so you don't have that slick of oil at the top and the micas won't stick to the side of the bath if you use it you're going to have no issues at all I honestly never had anybody ring me up to say that there was dye everywhere or stuck everywhere once they use the polysorbate 80. I'm also going to be using uh, Aromas Frangipani as well. This is the nicest Frangipani I've used to date. There are a few, one of them's called Hawaiian, but this is just the traditional Frangipani. It's kind of really sweet, a little bit florally, but mostly sweet and kind of tropical and fun. So that's why we're going to be using this one. So anyway, let's get going. We'll start off doing the dyes first. And then of course we need to bloom it. For anyone that doesn't know, blooming means how we're going to color the bicarbonate soda to give it that rich, gorgeous, vibrant color. You know, when if you go into a Lush store, there's a vibrant and fun and colorful and that's because they have actually already gone through this process of putting the dyes in them and so on. So that's what makes the fun with the bath bombs. But we do use polysorbate 80 here at Nelson Soapery so that you can get a really good experience and the kitties aren't going to get bright blue or purple or pink hands. So anyway, like I said, let's get going and make this. All right, everyone. So I'm going to get my gloves on first of all because we definitely need these. Without the gloves on, you are going to have a very, very messy bench because um, these dyes will stain the bench. They go over everything. I mean, I always, always get marks stained all over my bench, but you know, this is not a kitchen for me. This is actually a professional uh, soap bench. So, so it's not so bad. So now when I actually use my little dyes here, I actually use this particular spoon here. So this is quarter of a teaspoon so for this particular one here remember this is a cherry red and I don't want it bright red so I'm probably only going to use like half of a quarter of a teaspoon so it's a very very tiny amount pop it into my little glass bowls that I use and all we're going to do is add some water in these in a minute because remember these are water soluble so no oil in these you need to add water in these ones and then I do have this yellow one here so do remember when you've got ones like this, like this is actually a granule. If you can actually see, it's like grainy. 
Um, so some are smooth and some are granule. The granule ones just mean that you do need to sit and, um, you know, let it go through. It's uh, the water soaking into it so the granules don't stick as much. Otherwise, sometimes they can be a bit annoying and just uh, sort of get stuck to everything and just not dissolve really well. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog. It's going a little crazy because my husband's just come outside. Um, but that's okay. So anyway, we're going to add the water to this bit here. And then we will be on to the next step. So this is the main step that I do first. Just preparing everything. And then once I've done that, I'll organize the bicarb. We'll measure that up. And then we're going to um, just bloom the dye. Uh, sorry, not the dye. Bloom the bicarbonate soda. So anyway, I'll grab the water and then we will just mix this in you only need to mix a small amount in you don't even need to measure the water too much uh, you know maybe like a, a tablespoon or something you know probably just half a tablespoon actually um, of water and then that's all we're going to do so let me just grab the water and I will be back so now when you're using the water I suggest that you use something like this it's just a pure water um, that you can actually use so it's a distilled water. You could use tap water, but generally I don't. I use distilled water um, because that way you know it has no chemicals, no nasties in it, and you know exactly what has gone into everything. Now, I also use these little uh, sticks. So, and then I just snap it in half so that I'm not wasting any of it because you're only mixing the dye. It doesn't matter about the end of the stick, does it? Uh, make sure you mix it really well because you don't want to have little granule bits and then if you can actually see this one can you see how it's got like these little granule bits in but once you start to mix it it will be okay sometimes it will get a bit clumpy but I don't worry about that I just got to mix this into my bicarb and if you can see this is kind of what it does sometimes you need to just keep pushing it along the side and mixing it in and it will mix in you can also use like a little palette knife as well but um, the granule one's just a bit more tricky, but uh, where I get these, they didn't actually have a non-granule yellow at the time, but now they actually do. And these come from Sud Off as well in Australia, if anybody wants to go and check them out. So it's sudoff.com.au. And as I always say, I make no money at all uh, when I talk about different companies. I just tell you companies that I like and that... Um, I think the products are, you know, really quality and a great product. So anyway, we have our two colors, don't we? Because our frangipan is going to have two. And we're not going to put the fragrance into that. We put the fragrance in later after it's bloomed. So blooming is literally just water, the dye and bicarbonate soda. And that is absolutely it. So like I said, we've done this bit. We'll pop this bit aside. And then we're going to get the bicarbonate soda ready. So let me just get that bit ready. So to bloom it, what you actually need is you do actually need, you know, just your sifter and then, you know, your basic bowl, which is going to go in your stand mixer. You can do this by hand, but it's definitely harder. So I do suggest um, a stand mixer, even a cheap one, a really old one from an op shop. It doesn't matter because it's only going to be used for bath bombs. And a one thing that's handy is this handy little thing. If you can see this, how it's got like, um, let me see where it is. See the little smiley face on the side? And this one here is telling us the room humidity. So if the bottom number where it says um, like 51, it's going up because I'm holding it. But generally you want this to be, you know, anything from say, you know, 20 to 50 is the best temperature. If it's raining, it will go up to 70 and that means there's too much water and moisture in the air and you don't want that. I haven't put my dehumidifier on and I'm going to put that on just to bring the temperature down a little bit. Or the, sorry, not temperature, the humidity. So it's telling you here, this is our temperature here, which should be 21.5 and then um, it's gone up to 55, the humidity. And it's because I'm talking as well. And when you talk, your breath um, actually, you know, it's like a steam almost. So, you know, because everyone, when you talk, there's like little bits of whatever in the air. So anyway, so that's what I was going to talk about. So um, anyway, hopefully that makes sense. So you can grab one of these from just a little discount store for a couple dollars. My husband actually had this on his desk and I said, give it to me. I want it. So um, I did actually take that for him from his desk. But these are really, really handy anyway. And if you have like an air conditioner or like, um, 
you know, a split system, often they do have a thing that says dry on them. And then that's like a hum humidifier as well. So it's really, really handy. So um, anyway, have a look at that on your settings. If, like I said, if you have a split system. But anyway, we've done that bit, haven't we? So let's get going with the bicarb. So here I do actually have my sifter here and uh, just sitting inside the bowl that I'm going to use. Now I know with my mixture here, I'm using uh, 2,100 grams, which is uh, 2.1 kilograms, isn't it? So we're going to pop that in here, sift it through, and, um, and then that's all we're going to do because then we need to bloom it, don't we, which is adding the water and the dye. So I'm just going to be popping this in. Tear out your scale first, and then we will just pop this in. And then these little bits here we're just going to tip out they would leave like a ugly sort of pimple looking thing on the bath bomb if I left them in so anyway I'll tip those out and look how silky smooth it is and now I'm going to move this over to the stand mixer and then we're going to be adding in the dyes so now here we are back at the mixer so I've just popped this in a mixer do remember this is what you need to use which is a paddle you definitely cannot use the whip the whip will not do the right thing so definitely make sure you pop the paddle in and we're just going to attach that to the machine so let me just pop this um, in now so we've got that so now we're going to just do one color first the one thing that I have to tell you when you're actually making bath bombs it's really important to not make like 10 kilos or 5 kilos in one go because once we put all the moisture and everything else into this um you know it will dry too fast so that's the one thing and i've made that mistake before where i've actually thought oh yeah i'm just going to do a bigger batch you know just do the whole lot do hundreds of them but then it doesn't work because it it just dries out too fast and you don't want to keep adding in witch hazel that's just disaster so anyway, like I said, we are going to bloom this. Remember, there is no mica in this yet. There is nothing else, only, uh, like I said, the bicarbonate soda. And then we do have our little liquid dye here. So we're just gonna pour that straight in. This is not going to fizz, so you don't need to worry because it has no citric acid. The citric acid is what is going to fizz. So that's why we do this dye first without the citric acid in it. And if you just dip it back into the bicarb and just get every last little bit out of the container, that's what I do. And then just, you know, like sort of get them all out because that way you're using up all the dye and you know exactly what you put in. Because if we don't do this, well, then we just don't know how much it is there because, um, you know, we could have left something in the bowl. So now we're going to just leave this. We're going to turn it on for a few minutes and then it will be absolutely beautiful before you know it. So let's just turn it on. make sure you're not going too fast as well so just put it on low and I never put this on high you might go to medium in about a minute or two so anyway I'm going to turn the camera off because it's a bit boring watching this just spin and then I will bring you back a little bit to show you how gorgeous it's going to look and in between doing this you need to get your spatula and turn it over so you know you're just going to turn it off get the spatula and uh, twist it over so before I stop the camera I'll show you that little bit. So let me grab a spatula. So we're just going to turn it off, like I said. So just lift it up, turn it all off for a minute. Um, safety first, and then just turn it over. And you'll start to see the little yellow bits. Because if you don't do this, they'll all be stuck on the side, uh, which is no good because you want to make sure it's all mixed in really, really well. So let's go and we will turn this on and we'll keep going. Now look how 
gorgeous that looks so it is absolutely gorgeous and a, like a lemony sort of frangipani color which is exactly what we want isn't it because um it's going to have um all the gorgeousness in it so then now so this is actually bloomed so we've done this you could leave this for three or four days and you don't need to worry but obviously when we get to mixing it further we will be adding in some mica um, just to give it a bit more yellow like I said so we don't use the lose the yellow if it's sitting in the sun um, so for now I've done this one so I'll pour this into a separate container and then from there I'm going to start and we'll do the next one which of course will be the pink one So now, once I've done the blooming, this is what I do. I just have these containers. These are just discount containers from like a little discount store. I think maybe they're from Kmart. They're a couple dollars. They're just like a little metal um, one. And they're actually perfect because they're low. So you don't want ones with a high side because they're too hard to mix. Because even once we do this, you'll see little bits of white that hasn't 100% mixed in. And um, we're just going to pour that in here. And then, of course, with your gloves on, we're just going to make sure that this is all good. And I still give it a bit of a mix with my hand. Mix all the white um, in to make sure it's all done super, super good. So, um, yeah, and I mean, look how satisfying and gorgeous that looks. Just beautiful. So um, we're loving that colour. So I'm going to pop that aside and we're going to do the whole process again for the red i won't make you watch that because that's a little bit boring although it's not red it's going to be a pinky color remember so i'll just pop this one aside and now i'm going to get some more bicarb like i said in here and start this again you can use the same container if you're doing two colors my suggestion is do not do more than two or three i've got one of my bath bombs that has three colors and honestly i hate making that one because it is so much work so i suggest trying to keep to only two colors all right so now we're starting to do the red and i thought i would show you a bit of a trick that i do so i can actually tell if it's mixed or if it's not if you just get your spatula and do a really sharp line like this you will be able to see the bits that are not mixed and i'm sure that you can probably see um those bits if if you can just see them here that aren't mixed in properly and that's how you'll actually know it's really a good way to tell you just get the, literally your spatula and go like that in a smooth line so you can see and we know that's not mixed good enough so we'll just turn it over and um like i said turn it back on for another minute or so and then this will be ready remember it's not going to be this light color we're going to be putting a pink into it I was going to put a different pink, but anyway, I'm going to put this bubblegum pink into it now. So let's turn this back on again. All right, so this one's finished and I'm going to now do the next step. So we've finished blooming. If you only wanted to bloom them and set them aside for a couple of days, you could do that. But I'm not going to because I need to get onto this. So I have this baby little... Um, you know like the little sifter kind of thing so we'll just move this out the way just going to pop that in there and now what we want to do is we want to put some cream of tartar in here cream of tartar is going to make our mixture gorgeous and it is going to make the bath bombs hard so that is why you need cream of tartar um, so you can use any one you like <clears throat> but this is the one i'm using and get this from your local shop and you really just want this is uh, this is um, a half uh, tablespoon, remember, and I'm putting two heaped um, spoons of two halves into it. You can put extra. There's nothing wrong with putting extra. The more you add, the harder it will be. But you don't need to waste all the materials as well because just remember, you know, you don't really need everything, do you? We're going to put a half um, a tablespoon um, into here of mica. So we'll just add our mica in here. So let me put the lid on that. Now, every bath bomb you make will be different. For me, I actually add kaolin clay as well into mine. So let me just grab that. And you just need to add like half, um, really just like half a tablespoon to one tablespoon. If you want to do a milk one as well, if you're doing a milk bath bomb, this is when you would be adding in your milk powders. 
into this um, as well. So remember from here, we have our cream of tartar. We have some Caitlin clay. We also have our little bit of mica. And if you want to add in SLSA, this is when you would do it. Honestly, I add in the smallest amount of SLSA, just a very, very tiny bit. You don't need heaps of that, just a really small amount. And I'm just adding in a quarter of a tablespoon. That's all you need to add. Do remember that is really airborne, so be careful with this LSA. Um, and then we're just going to try and get all the lumps and bumps out. That's why we're using a sifter. And that's it. We're going to turn this on in a minute. Now, do remember we also need to be adding in our oils, don't we, to this. So what I actually do is I just add them in. You can mix them in a cup first, which I will do just to show you um, what I'm going to be doing. But for now, I'll just pop this on a little bit just so this kind of mixes in a little bit. Do remember we're not adding citric acid yet. That is the last thing you want to add. And you can see how it's already turning a gorgeous pink as well. So we're just going to give it a little skin. And you can see that's all we're going to do for now. So let's go on to the next bit. All right, so on here we do have our little um, glass. So I just do mine in a tiny baby glass. Now with an oil mixture, which mine is an oil mixture, no alcohol in this. The one thing that I have to say to everybody is when it is summer, you need to add more oil. So for instance, we are going to be adding in three half tablespoons of oil today. But when it is actually summer, you're going to be adding in a different amount. So, and for me, we're in summer now. So I'm going to show you what I actually do. So I get lots of people say, oh, your recipes are all different. They vary. Yeah, they do vary. And they vary for a reason. Um, if you don't um, vary your recipe, then you're just hoping that it's going to work. You do need to remember when it's hot, when it's cold, it changes. And that's why, to be honest, I sell a lot of bath bombs to all different companies and some to soaping because a lot of soapers hate doing it because they know how fiddly it actually is. This smells so delish. So like I said, this is the frangipani. We're going to be adding in two half tablespoons um, of fragrance oil. Some, some of these you could add more than this, but you don't need to add more. The more you add, um, you know just the more stuff that's in it and i just don't like to do that i try and like to keep my fragrances light you don't want a super super heavy bath bomb fragrance because it's going on someone's skin they're actually sitting in this so that is really important uh to actually know so now i'm going to get all of the uh next things that i need because i don't have them on the bench here and i'm going to put some jojoba oils in some apricot kernel oil as well just to make it absolutely gorgeous and you can use sweet almond or something else if you want. I don't use um, a lot of those in this. And there is a big reason for it. Once you start adding all of those heavy oils, it gets really fatty. Um, and we don't want a fatty kind of bath bomb because then the oils are going to seep to the top. So anyway, like I said, let's get on to the next bit. All right, so we'll move this aside so I can show you what I'm doing. So this is pure apricot kernel oil. So we're going to be adding in this as well. And then, of course, we are going to be adding in the jojoba oil as well. So we're going to be adding in two half um, tablespoons of apricot kernel oil. i got to make sure it's the right one because I thought we don't want to add the wrong one, do we? So remember, like I said, we've got two half in that. And I'm just going to tip this into uh, my mixture because the glass is too full. And you can leave it sit in there just for a minute. It's fine. And so now in here, this is the jojoba oil. And we're just going to add half a tablespoon of that in there. And that is a beautiful skin loving oil to use as well. Make sure you put your lids on because... These are really expensive. It's like $50 or something a bottle. So you don't want to spill that. And then this is your polysorbate 80. And like I said, this is going to stop it, um, the oil going crazy in your bath. You just need one half tablespoon of that. And also, once we start mixing this, we will spray a little bit of witch hazel 
um, and so on. But anyway, let's go over to the mixer and we'll start. So you can see I've literally just poured it all in here. Let's turn it on and let it do its magic. We are also uh, going to just spray a little bit of witch hazel, which I keep in a bottle, uh, about four sprays. And you will see the colour changing now. So let's mix it. You need to mix it until it's really well combined. In between, just make sure the same thing, you're stirring it and getting it off the edges. If you have a KitchenAid or a fancy industrial one, you probably won't need to do this. Um, but like I said, let's just... And it smells so, so good. And you've just got to keep mixing it. And even once I take it out, then I just mix it with my hands in the bowl as well. And you can see it's looking pretty good. Um, as I said before, it's really super important um, that you just keep mixing it and, you know, mix the whole thing through. Um, and you can see that this is not like holding its shape, but remember, it's not going to hold its shape yet because we are going to be putting in... Um, our citric acid which we haven't put in citric acid if you know the whole idea with citric acid for anyone that doesn't know is to make the bath bombs fizz and spin so if you don't put enough it will not spin you need to put 50 percent of uh what you're putting in so like this is 2100 so it means we need 1050 grams of um the citric acid don't we so like i said we're just going to mix this i'll leave this on and then um, I am actually just going to give this one a couple more sprays of witch hazel, but that's it. And now I'll get to the next step. Now, if you can actually see, it's really, really bright now. It goes brighter and brighter. And do remember, the minute you add this citric acid in, it's going to change. So I've weighed this up already. We'll just pop that in, turn it back on again, and that's literally it. And then we'll do the other one. So that's why you need to be fast with two or three colours. So I will do the other one uh, off camera because I need to be a bit fast. And that's about it for this bit, everybody. So you can see how gorgeous it is. You're just going to hold it in your hand and see that it's going to hold all right. That one's fine. I can feel that it's fine. Don't put too much oil in. If you put too much oil in, um, what's going to happen is it will get too heavy and the bottom the bottom of the bath bomb will just go um, really, really flat and wonky. Because when it's too heavy, it means that it's just not going to hold its shape very good. And you can tell because it's kind of like that kinetic sand. It feels a little bit like kinetic sand, just a bit more drier. All right, so we have our two absolutely beautiful colours, don't we? So we have the pink and then, of course, the yellow. And to me, that reminds me of frangipani. Now, I'm going to be doing them in these moulds here. So this is, um, I got these from Bath Bomb World. A man makes these by the name of Jason that many people know, which is called the Express Machine. So they're really, really good and super smooth. Now, the pointer I can give you is when you are actually... Uh, doing two colors use a spoon don't try and dip your hand in because you'll mix the colors so that's the best idea and I actually measure all of mine so I'm just going to tear this out on the scale first all right and now I want mine to be 130 grams so I'm literally just going to be doing that in the scale so let's just uh, do this. So usually what I do is I do one or two of one, one or two of the other and so on until I reach uh, what I want to reach. And there is no right or wrong in doing this as well, everyone. So it says 132, which I know is pretty good. So now here we go. That's what it's going to look like. We're just going to put the lid on. And then I'm going to push it through my machine, which I don't think you can probably see me in my machine. So let me just show you one at least. So I've got the machine here and all I'm going to do is just pop it in here and push it. If you had um, an electric one, of course, you could do that as well. 
and let me just take it out of its little mold now remember because this is two colors you're not going to shake it off in here i just shake mine back off at the bench and wipe the bench down later and then we're going to give it a little bit of a tap with a knife so i'll grab that so we're just going to tap around here with Jason's molds, you don't tap the top. You don't need to, otherwise it can come apart. And look how absolutely sweet and gorgeous that looks. And now on here, I just do have uh, the tray that I've got. This is a cake pop tray with some plastic on. So let me just turn it upside down. And look how absolutely darling that looks. So let's get going and we'll do the rest. So hopefully I've showed you enough on these little bath bombs to give you an idea on how I actually do do mine. And I really hope it's um, helping everybody um, understand how, you know, how you can do them. There's no right or wrong, just make them however you think and um, make them gorgeous, you know, because that way it's, this is all about you, you know, you've got to put your personality into everything as well. All right, done. We'll put the lid on. We're on to number two. And I will show you how this one looks in a minute. And of course, at the end, I will show you how they look. And then I do wrap all of mine up. So when you're doing this, all you're going to do is literally go around the edge, wipe it off. This little line you can see becomes the satin ring. So if you want a wider satin ring, you need to add more in. But mine, like I said, are all 130 grams. And look how cute that is once again and we'll just tip it on the tray and that's it all right so i'm going to keep going i will let the camera roll a little bit so you can uh hopefully not be bored by me and see what i'm up to and uh i do have to work fast now because the mixture will start to get wet so don't add more witch hazel just kind of mix it around um every now and then you might want to add more witch hazel but i try not to do that sweet it is so we'll turn that one upside down and they're all way all going to be different so they're not going to be the same some will have more pink and some will have less anyway i will come back and show you the end result well look how gorgeous they are they are beautiful sunny fun and of course you know a little bit of summer isn't it so thank you everyone for listening i hope you loved my uh video for today make sure you give me a thumbs up and i will see you on the next video bye for now